What's up, guys? It's Let's Talk About It here. We got Lucas here, and we're talking about moving. How yeah. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Good to have you here, Lucas. Good to be here. Good for you guys to be here with us. Uh, as Clayton just said, we're talking about moving. Uh, to to, to kind of get us started off, I'm actually kind of fascinated with everybody in the chat there. Let us know how many times that you have moved, like got up and moved, uh, as in uh, we're, we're leaving and staying in a place uh, for... Uh, I, let's say how long is a good like let's say more than a month at least you know so if you were going to be in a place for at least a month you got up and you moved all enough of your stuff that you had to be able to live there establish yourself there let us know how many times and, and let's kind of start with that you guys be tallying that as well i'm also curious too who has moved the farthest so who's had to move the farthest uh and i'm also curious who has moved the most times so how many of those times have you had to move uh so i'm really curious about that so uh who wants to even start us on some of those just to get us going and rolling on this conversation how about how about you lucas Let, since you're the guest we'll give you the privilege of starting us off i'm trying to tally how many houses i've been in <laughs> so i know where i used to live I've been in at least five, I believe, five different houses. We moved back, so that's six, and we were in a townhouse for a couple months, so maybe about seven, six different houses. Wow. So, mm, probably seven because we lived here in Texas beforehand. So so okay. where where all have you lived, like, throughout your entire life? So from, like, believe one to three. I don't really remember. We were here, I guess, more Sugar Land area here in Texas, and then we moved to Doha, moved around there a lot. Help help the viewers out. Where is Doha? Yeah. <laughs> Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Middle East. That the Middle East. Mm -hmm. All right. So all right. So wait, you went from one to three in Houston and then to Middle East? Yep. And wow. Then, all right. I don't and I then, bet your mama was a wreck to be taking a three year old to the <laughs> Middle East. I uh, I don't know if I was the greatest mover, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then we moved, so we were there for seven and a half years. We came back here when I was going to sixth grade and we lived in a small townhouse for a couple of months, and then we moved into our house that we are still in today. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have the distance travel at least right now is Lucas. So all the way Let's over see if there, I can figure out how far that is. All <laughs> the way over there in the Middle East. So that's definitely a long ways to travel and to do it twice, really, to go there and then to come back for sure. How about you guys? When you think about moving, how many times? How many houses? How many? How distance traveled? I've moved once in my life, and I was less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes away? <laughs> it was right down the road. Nice. nice. Okay. Aiden? I, I don't know how I would describe moving because, like, I've been in different places because my parents are separated, so, like, their houses have always been in different places, and, like, my dad has moved so much more than my mom has. Like, if I'm counting just where me and my mom have lived, we've only lived in two different houses. One was uh, down by Our Savior, which is... Uh, school connected to Trinity and then um, our most recent house which was we moved out here in like seven or eight years ago and we're living in Tomball now but like my dad's house is since I was a kid he's lived in apartments and all kinds of different houses so like I don't know how I would yeah yeah, yeah. well how many times that. did you have to like pick up all your stuff and live with your dad for at least a month like um many? I've done that I think I've only done that like once and it was a summer a long time ago. Okay. Okay. So that's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about yeah, though. Yeah, that, yeah. that idea of moving to, yeah. And so for me, when I was your age, at least, so when I was sitting there at the end of my senior year, I had never moved. I was, uh, I, I was the third of four. And I think once you're, once you become like the lower or the younger children, like you don't, your parents don't move as much. So I'd actually be interested. Was Meryl alive when y'all moved to the house y'all live in? Yes. Okay. We were very, we were both very young, but we were both alive. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so that was the thing. Like, I remember actually, like I was kind of the new house celebration. Like they moved into a new house and then, oh, what do you know? We have How a baby. We? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's like a picture of my parents kind of in, when our home was pretty uh, new for us at least. And so it was really interesting, but yeah, I'd never moved anywhere. I'd never gone anywhere. And part of that was actually because, uh, my mom, my mom, uh, was an air force child. Uh, so she started actually, you know, where my mom was born, Florida. Good guess. Cause that's where she graduated high school. She was born in El Paso, Texas. Yeah. So she was born in El Paso, uh, moved before she was two years old. Uh, I believe they went up to, Kansas next, so Topeka, Kansas, uh, and then went over to Japan. Uh, so we we're in uh, Topeka, or not Topeka, uh, 
not Tokyo either. I can't remember where they were in Japan, but they're over there in station in Japan. I remember it's Jefferson High School, wherever Jefferson High School is on an Air Force base in Japan. <laughs> that's where they were. Uh, I knew they could see Mount Fuji out the back of their window. Uh, but uh, then they came back to the States and they were at Scott Air Force Base for a while. They're outside of St. Louis. Uh, I, I believe there might have been a brief moment in either Indiana or Illinois, or at least a lot of travel there. Uh, but then my, my mom's uncle died uh, down in Florida. And it was my, my grandfather's only brother. So he was like, we're going to go down there to take care of the family. He had a lot of kids. So, uh, and most of them were, were grown or in high school or older, but he said, I got to be there for my brother's kids. So they moved down to Tallahassee in the panhandle and that's where they settled. And that's where they kind of, that's where my mom graduated high school. Uh, but once she started, she started freshman year at one school, went to sophomore year, another school, and finally got her junior, her senior year, uh, in at Leon high school in Tallahassee. But the reality was, uh, when I, because I asked her, we were kind of mad. Like, everybody else gets to move. Why do we not move? Blah, 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 blah. And she said, because I did so much. She says, I did not want you guys to have to endure picking it up and moving like I did. And she was, she was so challenged by, by moving that many times that she, to this day, hasn't left Warner Robins and hasn't left that house that I was born into. So it's kind of interesting how much of her life she's kind of spent there. But all this to say, too, and you guys have, uh, you, I mean, I saw Jeremy said three-ish times. So I'm curious who's moved the farthest. I mean, we'll, I can dive into more of my stuff. Uh, I'm at 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles. There you <laughs> go. So let's see, let's see who else out there. I'm sure there's some good stories out there, people that have uh, traveled a good distance or moved a good distance. I won't get into my later stuff. I kind of want to start with this question, though. You guys are the ones that came up with this topic of moving. Why are we talking about moving? I feel like moving brings in, like, a bunch of different feelings people have so like there's always those happy feelings like okay you're moving to a bigger house it's the same area but you're moving to a bigger newer house and then there's those times where like you're moving across the country or across the state and it's like how does that affect kids that like how does it stretch them apart stretch apart like their lives as kids sure sure and, there, and that was one of them but like i also remember you guys sharing with me another very uh very practical reason why we're talking about moving well i think a lot of it was because we were kind of on that that course to college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we, we started we talked about graduation last week and now we're talking about moving because that's kind of the next step yeah exactly so, so it's kind of interesting for us right because there is that reality and let's talk about that reality that's a that's something that families always have to navigate uh and uh but also this reality that many of you guys are looking at that i might be moving for the first time or the most a uh, significant move I'm about to make by going off to college or something like that. So uh, I think, so I'll, I kind of, I guess I'll dabble a little bit into my, my story a little bit more, right? I didn't move anywhere for 18 years. Uh, but then let's just look at the last 12 years. Uh, and I know I've tallied it up at some point. I know over nine years, I moved more than 21 times. Uh, it was just a lot, you know, from the idea of Again, packing up to move to go to college, but then packing up to move to come home. Uh, and for me, part of the reasons why it became so many times was not just the typical move to college, come back home. Uh, but then I had grad school that was mixed in there. And then I had camp when I worked those two summers in Maine as well. So I would actually come home from college for a month. So move all of your stuff and then pack all of your stuff to move to camp for a month or month and a half and then pack all your stuff or have all your stuff packed at home already to move back to college. Like there's a, those two summers. I remember my dad hadn't seen him all summer long at the Atlanta airport. Mom's driving. Dad was driving my truck and uh, he jumped out handed me the keys. Good to see you. And I drove to football camp because <laughs> like I, camp was starting the next day. It was that kind of a transition. And so, and then of course I chose a profession that historically uh, moves around a good bit, right? Pastors can be called at any point uh, to be able to go and travel, and it can be wherever. I mean, just even the journey to become a pastor, right, was go to seminary in St. Louis, which was 12 hours away from anything I'd ever known. And then I had uh, uh, Green Bay, Wisconsin as a vicarage. So that was seven hours from St. Louis, which was the closest thing of anything I'd ever known. And then God sent me to Texas, and that was 13 hours away from anything that I'd ever known. So this is a kind of an interesting journey. So when you guys think of moving, what questions do you guys have, or what kind of a conversation do you guys want to have about moving? What What is the most important part about moving? Like, like what do you think... What do you think is the most important thing to remember about moving? Like, what is like emotionally? Because I feel like I feel like a lot of people think about like the actual process and they don't think about the oh, emotional sure. toll that it's going to take mentally, on them. Yeah. Well, Lucas, what do you got on that one? 
Well, emotionally, definitely, because, you know, when you're in a certain place with for a certain amount of time, you know, you build relationships with people and then, you know, eventually you kind of, especially moving like where we did for 8,000 miles away, now you, you're never going to see those people again. So like a lot of those people that you became friends with, you know, you're stressed out. You're also moving to a whole new scenery. You have no idea what to expect. You know, they're from, you know, Doha to here, completely different situations. Day-to-day life is very different. And so it's a lot of that, you know, it's stress, you know, anxiety, you don't know. But there's also a little bit of excitement, you know, because sometimes moving on to newer things is always fun to uh, experience. But emotionally, definitely, I mean, it's kind of a roller coaster. There's got, you know, your pros and cons. Yeah, and so this this kind of, sorry, I just saw a comment come up, and this kind of ties into uh, a little bit of that, this question of what's the most important thing to remember emotionally about uh, moving or things like that. So Lexi mentioned, uh, I don't know if you already, but how do you cope with moving from your family uh, who you're very close with? So so I think that, that speaks to that emotional piece of, uh, of, well, and at least there you're moving with your family, but there's that, mm-hmm. that emotional piece of leaving people that you work close with that you yeah. feel like you're never going to see again. It was actually kind of, uh, interesting. The seminary, uh, live streamed their, uh, graduation this year, their commencement. And I watched it and it was great. It was nostalgic. It was really cool. But one of my, uh, professors and, and I love this guy and he's so smart. It's not even funny. Uh, but he's like, congratulations guys. See you at the eschaton. And if you don't know what the eschaton is, that's when Jesus comes back. So it's kind of like, what the heck, man? I'm like, it's very much say it's a theological way of saying, Hey, I'm never going to see you again until Jesus comes back till the end of the world. But it was just kind of fascinating. So I don't know, like emotionally speaking, it is tough. I mean, it's a hard one. And I think my biggest piece of advice in moving is, uh, and, and let us know if there are people out there that have experience with this, what, what experience, what, uh, advice do you have, uh, for moving, uh, for, for this piece? Uh, and mostly speaking, know that you're going to grieve. You're going to grieve the loss of what you've known or what you've had. It's going to happen. Uh, it's not fun. Like it'll happen pretty quickly too. It'll happen within the first couple of days, uh, if not easily the first month, but, but most likely it'll happen in the first couple of days or first couple of nights. And, but the other side of that, my piece of advice for you is, uh, embrace where you're at, uh, and embrace the people that, that you're being sent to. Uh, because I think that's where a lot of people, I mean, I've seen it, especially with, uh, if you carry a boyfriend or girlfriend over into a transition, like I've seen plenty of people that will spend those first two or three weeks where everybody's making their friendships or getting to know each other and things like that. And they'll spend hours of each day just talking to their significant other. Now this was back before Instagram, back before FaceTime, back before all that it was phone calls. But man, I've seen it over and over again where they will just abandon all the new people you're at to try and keep something that was there. Now, don't don't get me wrong. You're going to keep those relationships. They will be there. Um, but my advice for you is just embrace what you got. I mean, you, you guys are in such a cool time because of how many opportunities you have. Oh, well, this is actually kind of timely. Uh, I just sent a message because I had forgotten to send it earlier today. I, we have a group that uh, for seminary, we went... Uh, we went five years together. It's not typical to go five years, but each of us had our own circumstances on why we didn't want to go year round uh, to seminary because that was our reality because we didn't come from a Concordia uh, college and have languages and stuff. So we call ourselves the five-year mafia. And we've been talking about a reunion ever since we graduated. We graduated four <laughs> years ago. And, uh, and what we finally, we felt dumb. It took a pandemic for us to realize, oh, let's just Zoom, guys. <laughs> <laughs> So like tomorrow night uh, at, at seven o'clock this time, we have a Zoom like reunion together. And it was like, oh, wow. And we're all super close. Like that's the thing for me, I don't know about you guys. Like the strangest thing for me about moving is when you go back or you visit back, for me at least, I feel like it was just yesterday and I'm able to catch up. I mean, I had a, I had a wedding of a buddy of mine uh, in June of last year up in Minneapolis. And uh, we hadn't seen, I hadn't seen him in, I think it was eight years we counted. You know what I mean? I hadn't really, I think we might've talked on the phone a few times, but we, we really hadn't seen each other. But man, it was like yesterday. We were still close. We were still friends. That's still possible. But I've also seen in some people that's not so possible too. Uh, so cool. Some stuff coming through the chat. Bogey, good to see you. I haven't been able to say, hey, Mindy, good to see you. Uh, uh, Lexi, Trish, uh, great to see you. Jake, great to see you. Uh, Michelle, great to see you. Travis, Austin, Merrill. Uh, Josh, Jeremy, uh, Maggie, 
everybody, Mia, uh, uh, everybody that's come in. Sorry, I haven't been able to say hey yet. Uh, but yeah, Michelle's <laughs> we'll definitely everyone. Michelle's definitely with us there, embracing the excitement and the newness. And and, and again, because I think I think your past can drag you away from that. And, it, and it's a mental block, and it is so hard, but that's a big one. Uh, isn't it weird going from Trinity to Concordia and growing up with basically the same people uh, for your whole life? Now, and that's the, I mean, for, so I went to, and I'm talking a lot, guys, I'm sorry. So definitely butt in, whatever you want. But like, I grew up going to, I was public school my whole life, but you, you, in, in the public school system, you know how there's feeder schools, right? Mm-hmm. So this elementary school most likely feeds into this middle school, most likely feeds into this high school. And I remember the hardest one of those transitions was middle school to high school because my, our middle school split because we were right in between the high school I went to and the other, and another school in there. Um, and that was a really hard one. But for the most part, like my best friends – our, my very best friend, like we had been in class together for 12 years together in public school. Like it was very rare that we didn't have a year where we had classes together. And so that was really tough. But again, just because you're going different places or different journeys doesn't take away from what you've shared together. Uh, and it also doesn't mean you have to pull away from where you're going or not embrace what's coming at you too. All right. I've talked a lot. What do you guys have to say? <laughs> Lucas, what do you think is the the easiest part about moving? Uh, I think personally, it probably varies for a lot of people. But for, the easiest thing for me was kind of just kind of looking forward to the new things because I know it was a little bit simpler moving back here because I had a few people when going to Trinity that I knew, so a little bit of familiar faces, uh, kind of like what we were talking about. You, you know, you have past relationships, but I mean. You know, it's easy to get caught up in a lot of the stuff around you. But I mean, I think it is important to focus on the things that you are going to experience that is new and try not to latch on to all the old stuff. Because as we already said, you know, you'll get kind of bogged down trying to think of what was and it's, you know, better to embrace what is coming. Right. Yeah. And there's a piece of that, right? I mean, I mean, well, and I'll try and see if you guys have some thoughts on this one. Why is that so critical? To embrace the new? Well, not just embrace the new, but 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 not let the past prevent you from embracing the new. You'll fall behind in the like that society, that that working like area. You know what I mean? Like the community. You're gonna fall behind in that community. You're not gonna stay in touch. It just it'll trickle down slowly, but it's definitely not gonna happen like that. But you have time to once you move and you get those connections, you gotta make those when you have the chance. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's and that's kind of the thing is uh, the, here's the other thing you'll notice, uh, is, especially if you're a part of. Well, I was a part of a sports team, like so. I, I played college football, and it was just funny to watch how many guys were so competitive about how it was done where I'm from, or making sure people knew. Well, I'm from so and so, and this is what we did, and this is my friend, and we knew each other, and blah blah blah. It just becomes kind of defensive because I was kind of like. Well, I'm from Warner Robins and I don't know anybody here. Mm-hmm. Like Lee's name. Nice to meet you. You know what I mean? It's kind of like being able to embrace that and not let that stuff kind of fall behind. We got a good question in the chat. Uh, uh, <laughs> is it important to touch base with your parents when you go off to college? And the answer is no. <laughs> yes. We yes. need money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I say. We called every day. And for no other reason than if you want to be able to eat, you're going to continue to connect with your parents. And so how often uh, should you call mom and dad? What do you think the answer is? Once a month. Uh, you can every uh, every week, at least a week, at least every week. You can constantly text them, though. But, like, yeah. do you have to call Not them, Not the though? same thing. Not what? the same thing. Okay. That's just the difference in generations. You got boomers, not, and you got the, I'm the generation right now, of power. It is not. Right. And we have the, the <laughs> so it's actually, the, when you say it actually is the difference in generations, and it's not my generation and your generation, it's your generation and your parents' generation. So your parents, a phone call would be far more meaningful to them than you texting something. I'll write them a letter. Because every day right now, they get to hear your precious little voice. And they <laughs> don't get that as soon as you it's move so away. It's so precious, though. It is. And here's the thing is, they miss you. They love you. They want it. They, they've been prepping for this moment. They're so excited for you to become an adult. And they want to hear about it. How are things going? How is? Who are you meeting? What's your new life? And to not be a part of that at all 
is is like is like you've died, you know. So don't die to your parents. Yeah. So and I will say this don't at least die for to your parents. This is this is true <laughs> so to my dark. this is true to my 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 family at least. What was important was that I call mom once a week. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was very much like, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that <laughs> I could. And like, my dad was not one that was sitting there on the phone with mom listening in on how it's going. I know there are dads out there that are like that. That is awesome. Uh, and I'm certain that like, if you're, you the if you're a girl like that, that will definitely be what dad is very concerned about how you're doing and things like that. But my dad was very, I was the third one to go off. He knew he'd be seeing me at football games and things like that. He was far more interested in how that was going to go. Uh, but, but actually my mom was too. She was always wondering about football because uh, her dad was a football coach. So it was kind of in her blood. Uh, but yeah, call mom once a, once a week. Pick that day. Sunday tends to be a wonderful day to do it unless you get involved in an organization that happens to meet on Sunday nights or something like that. So uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, just remember you're moving as hard on those who stay behind too. No doubt about that. Well, I, I told you guys this story before, uh, but I don't, I haven't told the broader listeners out there. When I moved to college, did I tell you about the summer before moving to college with my mom? I think you, I, I think I vaguely remember this. Absolutely miserable. Yes. Absolutely miserable. My, I was sitting there, I'd worked at camp. I love camp. I'm a huge camp person. It's a piece of my heart. If you've ever worked at a camp, you understand me better than most people. Uh, and I was working at camp and I was spending time with them because I was going off to college. I was finally a counselor. I had freedom. Yeah. Hey, we're hanging out here. We're doing this. So I was gone all the time and I would get home and my mom was so mean to me absolutely mean to me. Like she was not nice in the words that she said to me. She was very much like, well, where have you been? Well, why are we doing that? Well, you have responsibilities here too. And blah, blah, blah. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? And I was like, I am done with this. I'm so ready for college, right? That was the way my life was going. So I go and it's the end of the summer camps over. I'm packing up for college, getting ready for camp football camp. And, uh, I finally pack up my truck, right. And it's all done. And I look at my mom and we've not had a good summer. <laughs> and I, and she hands me like my graduation gift at the end of the summer. Cause they couldn't give it to me when I graduated. And she says, here's your graduation gift. And I said, okay, well the truck's packed. It's time to go. And she starts bawling, <laughs> crying. I'm so sorry. I've been mean to you all summer. I've been dreading this moment. I know like I've had two others go. It never gets any easier. Like, I'm sorry I've been so mean to you. I just wanted you to come closer. And I was like, well, you got a strange way of showing <laughs> that you want to be closer to me, mom. Uh, but that was how it went, you know? And so, uh, and, and the, that first move is, is one of the hardest. It never gets easier for parents from what I understand. It gets so much easier for students, uh, but it never gets easier for parents to have your kids move and go and leave. But man, that, that, that's a big thing to keep in mind is you're leaving people behind and they miss you and that hurts and that breaks their heart too. Got some comments in there. Gotcha. So, uh, how do you stay in touch with a friend? Uh, you've been 10 minutes away from since first grade to 10 hours away asking for a friend. What's your advice? What do you got? You have this great thing called a phone, and it, it works pretty well. I think you probably use it all the time, but I, I feel like that's probably the best way if you're not going to travel 10 hours each way, you know, and, and maybe on occasion you go and visit that person, but I think a phone call is probably pretty good. Especially now. You yeah. end up coming home, though, right? Holidays. for college. Holidays, and, and I will caution you. I mean, I, I went four hours away for school. And uh, it was strange because we had a good group of like 20 of us guys that were all super close in high school. And uh, when I came back, like they, they, and this happens, you might see this with, with people you all know too. They all go to the same place. Like my sister described a group of guy friends that all went through Auburn together. And then when it came time to get jobs, like two or three of them got jobs in Nashville. So the rest of them moved to Nashville. Uh, and it was like, but do they have jobs? It's just like, no. And I was like, really? So like, it was that kind of closeness that kind of held them back from doing what they needed to be able to do with their life and going into the next place. And so, and you see this too with girlfriends and boyfriends, I'm certain like people that choose schools based on girlfriends or boyfriends. It's like dangerous, danger, danger. Until there's a ring on that finger, that is dangerous. Danger, right. Danger. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but all that to say too, like, 
when I came home, I was, I mean, again, again, I was ready for conversation. I was ready to see people. People were hanging out without letting me know because they all went to school together and stuff like that. So there's a level of it's going to know it's going to hurt a little bit in some of those relationships. And the ones that are still really close, you're still going to stay close with. And, and, and it's okay for your friend to have new friends and new best friends and, and new good friends and great friends. Uh, and it's okay for you to do the same. Uh, so that's the thing is I think possibly the route you're going to see is you're going to stay close. You're going to stay connected. You're going to hang out so much, uh, at Christmas time. Uh, you're going to start talking about maybe a spring break together. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't work because your friend groups are doing different things and you might grow apart. And that is a possibility. I'm not saying it's a thing and it's definite, but it's a possibility. And I'm saying it's okay. Uh, if that happens too, because you're going to make new friends. Yeah. And it's whole new experiences, whole new things. And that's okay. And it's great to connect when you come home and you're both back and you're able to do that. No doubt about that. That's awesome. But just keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, I think it's important to realize that just because, you know, two people are going two different directions doesn't mean that they have to get rid of like the relationship they built between each other. I mean, cause yeah, you're going to experience new things apart from each other, but I think it is important to, realize, you know, you, especially with the phones, you can stay connected with someone pretty much all day if you wanted to. And so those relationships really don't have to suffer as much as people I think, think they will. I mean, I don't think, because I mean, if you're leaving on good terms and you know, your best friends going to different schools, I mean, I don't really see a problem why you can't still be friends. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the, that's the thing I'm saying is like, you're still going to be friends. You're still going to be on great terms. Uh, it's just that other new people are going to come into their lives too. And that's okay. Yeah. I don't think people need to be worried about, you know, losing relationships back here. Yeah. And it is, I think the caution with it though, too, is don't sacrifice where you're going for what you had back here either. Yeah. That's, sure. that's the danger. I think in this, this whole best friends for 12 years thing is like, well, don't let that stop you from making new friends where you're going and finding new connections and things like that. Cause you're still finding out who you are and you're still finding out where you're going. And like, it's interesting. I mean, I, one of my friends shared it best with me. Uh, now that I've lived in so many different places, uh, it's like a piece of my heart is all over this country. You know, there's a piece of me that's in Warner Robins, Georgia. There's a piece of me in Macon, Georgia at that camp uh, that I worked at for 10 years of my life that I still just, out of the blue, we'll get a text from one of them. And it's like yesterday we were together. Uh, there's a piece of my heart in Maine where I worked for two summers uh, and across this country because of all the people that worked at that camp were from all across this country. There's a big piece of my heart up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. There's another big piece in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, there's a piece in Birmingham, Alabama. And again, and all these people associated with it are now all over the United States. And there's a big piece of my heart here too. And that's okay. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's, it's hard. It's hard to navigate, no doubt about it. But yeah. So yeah, people are saying in the chat, moving to college is the best. Big facts, Will. Uh, and well, and so you guys, especially that are fresh to it, like how much of this is resonating to you as well? Of those of you that, especially if you went to a school where you weren't with people that you'd known your whole life necessarily. What advice do you have for some people? Cause I saw Seth jump in here and I know that's your experience. So that'd be neat to hear about. And all this to say, uh, I think I've said this before. There's my, my second least favorite thing in the world is cat litter. Do you know what number one is moving, moving, <laughs> hate it. <laughs> Cannot stand it. It is worse than cat litter. Does it 22 times. What's up? It said does it 22 times. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, like, and it is so, he speaks from experience. It is so draining. It is so absolutely draining. Physically, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually draining. Absolutely. And maybe because I did it so many times. You the got fact, Facebook friends all over The fact that this. he says that and he thinks that cats are the devil <laughs> tells me a lot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cat Cats are little mini demons most of the time. Yeah. I think I think my biggest thing for moving, like especially up to college, like obviously I'm not going that far. I'm going like 45 minutes away from home. But I mean, still like moving away from stuff that I've known for my whole life, especially like my mom and my grandparents, like they've been there for like every step of my life. And so like moving away from that and me knowing that in the next four years after college, like like once I move past college, like I'm not going to go back. You know, it's. Once, once you move past this step in life, you don't just get to go back. It's like you 
now you have to go on past that. And so it's, it's weird to think that what I have right now, I probably won't have ever again. Like the same, the same relation, not necessarily the same relationship, but the same thing that I have with him right now, I probably won't get ever again after this is. Well, over. and it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like everything else in life though, too. Right. So hopefully, right. Hopefully everything's different in a year. Hopefully everything's changing in five years. Hopefully everything's changing in 10 years because that means you're growing, you're learning, you're becoming, you're experiencing different things and all these things. That's kind of the hope, but I hope it, it gets enhanced. You know what I mean? It gets better. It gets more special. Like again, I think I've told people this before. I did not realize how important my parents were in my life or my family in general until I left them. Like that was the thing that slapped me in the face probably year one or year two of college was like, man, how many wasted opportunities did I have when I was home? Man, how much did I groan about? Oh man, my sibling did this or this or the TV or just stupid arguments. And then now where I'm at now, 13 hours away from anybody I will blood call family, right? It's tough, man. So so embrace what you got now, but it, it gets it gets so much cooler too down the road. And the relationship you're gonna have with your grandparents, the relationship you're gonna have with your mom growing up and making life decisions and big decisions. And that again, keep them involved because that's part of the joy of it all too. Lee, we we'll move in with you. We'll we'll be your family. Don't worry. Yeah, that's not <laughs> what I said. Again, moving is my least favorite thing, right? So, well, you're, not, uh, you're not the one that's moving. We'll move. But but there's a moving process happening. <laughs> And that would be pretty tough. 14th. Right. So moving in with strangers is a new opportunity to share the gospel too. Well, like, and I, whoa, that's a, I, y'all are getting me on stuff that I love. <laughs> so like, well, let's ask that question so I can stop talking. How does faith inform this topic? How does faith inform moving? Yep. What does faith have to say about moving? Well, well for you, it, it was pretty obvious that faith had a big impact on your move. Well, I mean, think about even my time in <laughs> college. Kind of reason. <laughs> think about my time in college and going to Maine and stuff like that too, though. So before the pastor thing was official, uh, before the seminary thing was a reality, you know, which was uh, all the way up until spring of my senior year of college. You know, I knew that was where I was going, but it wasn't official till then. How did faith inform it? How does faith inform what you guys are doing? How did faith inform all of your moves, Lucas? I mean, a lot of it's kind of a trust process, you know. Because, you know, we're talking about moving into the unknown, kind of you don't know what's ahead. So, I mean, faith definitely helped me kind of, you know, you're just sitting there. You got to try and, you know, deal with all these different emotions. So being able to kind of know God has a plan and he's got, you know, everything under control, it, you know, it can definitely help knowing that you have, you know, kind of God to look at and be like, okay, I know you have this under control. And even though I don't know what's coming up, I know you're going to help me through it. So, I mean, but... Going to college, I think also because it's definitely a different thing because like kind of what we cover going, you know, faith and moving into college. I mean, like we said, you know, you're, you maybe you'll meet someone who doesn't know Jesus and all that and you'll have an opportunity to share all that and that'll be a, you know, a great thing. But it was kind of different for me because I was moving from a place where, you know, Christianity wasn't the big thing to a place like a private school. So I didn't really get that opportunity to kind of do it like that kind of almost the reverse in a sense that I went, you know, I had to almost kind of learn to, you know, kind of set my anxiety to him. Yeah. What do you guys think? How is faith informing your perspective about moving and and the next, or even not not, not the whole situation from now until then, what what is faith informing about this? I think I, I agree with a lot of what Lucas said, trust in him and like his plan. And like that has a lot to do with it, but also to to remember that it, it's more about the other people that are around you that you're going to impact than just yourself and like what you're going to get out of it, what the other people around you are going to get out of it kind of thing. And like like he said, if, if somebody doesn't know God or somebody doesn't know faith, that you can hopefully help them to understand why you believe what you believe and why you do things the way you do things. Yeah. And and that's I think that's touching on a piece of what I would what I would have got at, which is continue to be you, you know? And again, that's, that's the thing is is faith being an opportunity to share the gospel. Well, how's that opportunity make itself known? You know, someone's not 
Well, it's because you're going to do you, and hopefully you're still going to have a relationship with Jesus. Hopefully you're still going to be reading. Hopefully you're still going to be praying. And, and you know, what great opportunities when you get caught doing that? Reading. Reading is a great thing. No. I did slip it into the graduation speech, too. <laughs> oh, Lord. I had one moment. I had one moment at the very end. I said it. Yeah. I think this all kind of reminds me of, like, in Acts, when they go, when they have to all leave and kind of spread the word. It's kind of like they're they're making that next transition as it goes in the spread of the faith. You know what I mean? Yep. And I feel like that's just how it is almost with like everyone's personal life. At, at some point, you're getting pushed off to go spread the good news or something about you. Yeah. And, and I think one of the other, it's interesting, we're talking about this moving, uh, but, but you can almost qualify a lot of this stuff, not even about moving, but transitions. Because again, if someone, someone who is not going away for college. Maybe they're going to Lone Star and something like that. A lot of this stuff is true for anybody that's facing a giant transition in life, you know, or maybe it's a new job or maybe it's a new, you know, whatever. It's that kind of transition thing that's so important. And so I think a lot of the stuff you guys brought out is huge for that. To to hear my other thoughts about uh, moving or how I think faith informs, uh, you can tune into uh, Concordia's uh, digital graduation uh, <laughs> tomorrow. What, what is the name of their YouTube channel again? Seder Nation TV. Seder Nation TV. Uh, they'll have it. I, I as a brief message tomorrow. There's going to be a different one. But I think when I look at both of the short version and the long version, like they're they're both kind of giving you my thoughts about what God has to say about your life as a whole. You know, and and a lot of this is that transition piece. So so there's some scriptural pieces from the Psalms in both of them. Tomorrow's from Psalm 139 awesome scripture that's always meant a lot to me since I was in middle school. Uh, and, and I really do. I mentioned briefly, I want this scripture on my wall, like somewhere with like, I actually have a plan to like put it on a little frame and then put like the States that I've been in around it, maybe even pictures below it, just as a reminder that no matter where I go, you know, this is my reality. But I think, I think your word trust Lucas was huge. Uh, for a lot of this too. But also I think it's faith doesn't just have to speak about moving. Faith has to speak about the the, the reality of moving. Uh, with that reality of moving or transitioning, faith has a lot to say about right now too. And I, I think that's where I'd kind of kind of leave it is that that you can look at your life right now and see how blessed you are, even with all the struggles, all the junk, uh, especially around right now, all the craziness. And you can say, man, I'm still pretty blessed to be right here. And looking ahead, man, I'm pretty blessed for that opportunity too. Any closing thoughts? Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining us out there in the uh, Instagram world. Uh, anybody listening on these, uh, even years down the road, hopefully we're still doing this, right? <laughs> At TK Crew Students, uh, follow us on Instagram, get informed about some things. Uh, we're going to have uh, an interesting uh, coffee talk tomorrow morning, uh, just a brief kind of time together with just Pastor Lee, I think, or maybe we're talking about it, we're figuring it out, to kind of review before we kind of put a cap on our journey in Acts next week uh, as we cover Acts chapter 7. But it's been great to be with you guys. Lucas, thanks for being here, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, it's been great. Awesome. Well, we'll see you next time on Let's Talk About It. See you.